My name is Dr. Sudhi Bulurian. I'm the MBA and Senior Lead Apprenticeship Program Director. I'm joined here today by our wonderful Apprenticeship Manager, Emma Ward. Hello, uh, everyone. Brilliant. We're going to go through our Senior Leader Apprenticeship um, today and give you a little flavour of what it's like to join us if you would like to do your Senior Leader Apprenticeship Programme. Um, we are a relatively small university, but that's by our choosing. But we have over 3,000 students from across the world, making Buckingham a very vibrant and diverse environment. We have eight schools, with the School of Business being one of those um, schools which the Senior Leader Apprenticeship is offered by. We're very proud of our distinguished student-focused teaching model, which enhances our student journey. We know each of our students by names. We know their strengths. We know their weaknesses. We know their likes, their dislikes. They're not a face among many other faces. And I think um, the statements that our students have given us reflect this. So, and I quote here, for instance, we have a unique, close-knit, happy place situated in nature and history. And I fully agree with that. We have one of the most beautiful campuses around here. And recently, another quote, a home where academic autonomy is encouraged, long lasting friendships are made and students can guard their dreams like the geese guard the cars. And yes, we have three lovely big geese on the campus. They've chose to live on our beautiful campus. We are located in the beautiful market town of Buckingham. And recently we were featured on BBC One Escape to the Country. So Buckingham was on that episode there. This makes us one hour from London, 40 minutes from Oxford and 25 minutes from Milton Keynes. So with a lot of free parking on campus, it's an ideal place to be. I'm gonna hand over to Emma now, who will go through uh, the apprenticeship requirements. Emma, over to you. Thank you, Sudi. Um, so in essence, what is an apprenticeship? For those of you that are not aware, an apprenticeship is an opportunity to study for an academic qualification whilst working full time. Um, it can be very tricky when you study whilst working. So an apprenticeship combines the ability to be able to take six hours of paid work time in which to complete your apprenticeship work. Um, apprenticeships have come a long way in the, in the last decade. I've worked in apprenticeships for over 20 years now. Um, and I've seen a real shift in, in how they're approached. So gone are the days where you will be doing your apprenticeship coursework in the evenings and at weekends. There may be a small element of that still with the higher level apprenticeships, but um, you have paid protected time within work in which to complete your um, apprenticeship work and also to attend the training sessions that are put on by the university. Um, Therefore, with this in mind, in order for you to become an apprentice, it's really important that the employer supports this because they have to uh, plan the work around this and make sure that you're released um, to enable you to complete your mandatory off-the-job training hours. So the apprenticeship, it's a level seven, which is equivalent to master's. Um, and for a reduced price, um, if you're successful on completion of your apprenticeship, you can also go on to undertake the uh, MBA at a heavily discounted price. Uh, the payment for the MBA cannot be paid from the apprenticeship levy. That's really important. So that would either be funded by yourself as the apprentice or by your employer if they're willing to do so. Uh, the Senior Leader Apprenticeship is an 18-month training course. And then at the end, you'll have five to six months in which to complete your endpoint assessment. So in total, it's a 24 month duration. So in order to be eligible for this apprenticeship, you need to be contracted um, for a minimum of 30 hours. 30 hours is what the government class is full time. Uh, you need to not be enrolled on any other gov government funded training program. Um, because this apprenticeship is funded by the levy, which I'll come on to in the next slide, um, if you were to be enrolled on two courses at once, it would be classed as double funding. You need to be working in England um, at least 50% of the time, uh, be on the business PAYE system, 
and be a resident in the UK for the last three years. There are some exceptions to the residency rules, such as if you're on the Ukrainian citizenship or you're in the armed forces or if um, you're, you've been resident in the EU. Um, so the best case scenario, if, if you don't fit into the UK resident for the last three years, is to email the apprenticeship um, admissions inbox as, as listed on these slides, which we will be sharing, um, to check if you have any concerns regarding your residency. So why choose Buckingham in which to do your senior leader? So uh, our current cohort have been studying hard since September. I know this because I'm actually on the uh, senior leader apprenticeship myself. Um, so I can absolutely testify to everything I'm going to be saying today. Uh, so we're 100% retention as it stands at present. Um, and when asked about the quality of the senior leader apprenticeship teaching, uh, the group graded the delivery on average as nine stars out of 10. Um, and I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that the um, module lecturers have been absolute professionals. They've been a font of all knowledge. They've been encouraging and supportive. A lot of apprentices, when studying um, things such as a senior leader, it might be that you've got many years' experience as a manager. However, you've never actually done any formal academic qualifications. So there can be quite a few knowledge gaps. Um, it can be things about theories. It can be about academic writing. But what I can um, absolutely agree with is that the the lecturers at the university and the support facilities around that um, absolutely do fill those skills gap and you know make you feel comfortable so it might be 20 30 years since you left university if you went to university at all um, but the university has the staff with the the knowledge and the expertise to be able to fill those gaps and enable us to do things like academic writing which i know was a concern for a few of us within the group um, so it's National Apprenticeship Week um, and we've been busy celebrating all week with um, our senior leaders, with the teacher apprentices, with our business admin, our digital apprentices. Um, and as part of that, the senior leaders completed a survey. Um, and these are some of the quotes um, about the kinds of new knowledge and skills that we've been able to gain from this apprenticeship so far. We've just started the third module, so we're on to the strategy mod uh, module. We've already done um, things like digital transformation, managing team dy dynamics, um, best practice. We've learned lots of tools, um, lots of problem solving tools. And I think what's really good in the lectures is that as a group, we share um, our real life work experience um, issues. So if we're dealing with um, things going on with the team, or if there's a new um, directive from above and how to tackle writing strategy and things like that. Um, it's a safe space and everyone's able to uh, discuss as a group the kind of things that we can talk about. Um, so it's absolutely brilliant um, in order to address any skills gaps that you may have. So how is the apprenticeship funded? So there's no cost to you as the apprentice to fund your apprenticeship. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's fully funded by the apprenticeship levy. Um, so if there's any employers on the call, how that works is if your wage bill is over £3 million, 0.5% um, of your annual pay bill will actually be automatically taken into the apprenticeship levy. Um, and what happens with that pot of money is at present it's ring-fenced purely for apprenticeships. And if you don't spend it, the government will take it back, kind of like a tax. So this is absolutely a pot of money that can be used to um, develop and train your workforce. Um, and if you don't utilize it, you will absolutely lose it. Um, and for you, uh, for any small employers that have a wage bill under that, you can actually claim 95% of the cost of the tuition back from the government via the levy. So you as the employer will only pay 5% of the tuition cost which is a really small amount when you think that you're supporting your employee to get through a, a level seven master's level qualification. Um, if you're a small employer and you're a non-levy employer, um, if there's any large employers that are underspending on their apprenticeship levy, they can also transfer funds to you. Um, so you don't even then have to pay the 5%. Uh, and, and there's a link on there to find out more detail about that. But what's Important to recognise is if you're thinking of doing an apprenticeship, 
um, there's no cost to you as the individual. The employer also cannot tie you into your job role um, on the uh, on the basis that they've um, funded you on this apprenticeship. So if you complete your apprenticeship and then decide to move on, you absolutely can. There'll be no financial penalty. Likewise, if you decide to um, move to a different employer halfway through your apprenticeship, we as a university are your um, training provider and we can follow you to your new employer as long as your new job role is relevant to the senior leader and your new employer is willing, willing to take over funding the apprenticeship. So if you're new to apprenticeships as an employer, um, what you would have to do is set up a, a apprenticeship digital service account. And from that, you would link with us um, using our UK PRN number, which is listed. Um, it sounds complicated. It, it's not that bad. As far as government um, software goes, they've actually created a really user-friendly site. Um, so if you, but if you do need support with setting that up, you can contact us, and I'm quite happy to guide you through that process. Uh, if you're a non-levy payer, um, you would have to reserve the funding three months in advance uh, via the digital site. And it literally takes about 10 minutes in which to do that. Um, and there's some short videos from the SFA there on how that is done. So if you're an employer on the call, what do you need to find out? So you need to find out if you're a levy payer. If you're a levy payer, have you got sufficient funds in your account? If your account is running low or you're going to run out of funds, you can actually um, apply for a top up from the government, just like the non levy. So the most you would ever pay is a 5%. Um, have you got a digital account set up? If not, do you need help with this? If you're part of a local authority or an, maybe an academy school, um, what will happen here is the apprenticeship levy um, will be held at what I'll call head office. So you would need to get um, authority from them to be able to access the levy pot. Um, and it's also important that when, um, when you apply for an apprenticeship, uh, that any paperwork that you fill in is as accurate as possible to make sure that when we're contacting people that we are absolutely contacting the right people. So off the job training I mentioned earlier, you've got protected time. This can be anything to six to eight hours per week um, as set out as what will be set out in your training plan if you sign up for this apprenticeship. Um, and that has to be completed. Um, if you don't complete this in paid work time, um, you cannot actually complete the apprenticeship and enter the endpoint assessment at the end. So this is regularly monitored on our ePortfolio platform and by our operations team. And where people are not entering the off the job, we'll absolutely have conversations to discuss and find out what the barriers are and try and resolve those. Because it's really important that you as an apprentice, not only do you get a um, paid apprenticeship, but also you get the time in which to complete the apprenticeship. So it's a win-win for the apprentice. It's a win-win for the employer because the training is funded and you get to upskill your existing workforce to be able to um, progress your business. So there's a guide here from the uh, ESFA about what counts and what doesn't count as off the job. For example, you can include things like uh, in-house training, going to team meetings, if it's relevant to the apprenticeship, then you can absolutely use that. So the timeline for applications is to be completed by the 31st of July 2024. Uh, and only once the only apply once your employer has agreed to fund the apprenticeship. As soon as the application is completed and submitted, the employer needs to complete the following actions, which is ensure the digital account is set up, um, ensure that that's done and in place um, as soon as possible. If you're a non-levy payer that you reserve the funding between uh, July and the 1st of September. Um, and by the 21st of August, we'd ensure that all the applicants are inputted onto the digital account and linked with the University of Buckingham. Um, if the paperwork's not in place and completed, unfortunately, we won't be able to access the funding, which would then put your place at risk. Um, our next induction date is the 5th of September on the beautiful campus. Um, and then we were doing an annual intake. So what we'd want to do is support you to make sure that um, you're on the next cohort because otherwise it's another year to wait for the following one. So now I'm going to pass back over to Sudi, who will talk you through uh, an overview of our senior leader apprenticeship. Thank you so much, Emma. Um, 
who is the senior leader apprenticeship for? It's basically tailored for you. Um, working professionals who are doing full time and it enables you to get an employer funded master's level qualification while in employment. Your main point of contact is the School of Business. And as Emma mentioned, this makes all the lecturers who will be teaching you qualified to teach you both from an academic and professional background because they have professional experience in the industry as well. You will have an academic mentor allocated to you at the beginning of your apprenticeship journey. And this person will have professional experience in industry and academic experience, making them very knowledgeable as your academic mentor. We're collaborating with Chartered Management Institute as our endpoint assessor. This means that you will have access to their full suite of resources in addition to our resources in the library, enhancing your journey even more. Could we go on to the next slide? Thank you, Emma. Um, who's gonna choose this course? And I think by now you probably know who that is and that's current or aspiring leaders. Basically, if you're in a position, you're a current leader, or if you're moving on to become a leader and you want to enhance your leadership skills, uh, knowledge and behavior, this is the course for you. As employers, you'll be investing in this senior leader apprenticeship and you'll, it's a valuable means of motivating, retaining and developing professionals in a competitive require, um, competitive recruitment landscape. The teaching overview, we uh, are focused on 12 areas and these 12 areas are everything that you would need to be able to get the right skills and knowledge to manage and lead teams at a senior level. So areas such as the decision-making and leadership, strategic analysis, and also areas that are important in our current business world, like digital technology and disruption, the use of AI and how that is there, or sustainability and ethics. There's a lot going around on these issues. Negotiation and culture management. We work, a lot of us, in diverse areas. So these are areas that we will be focusing on. The delivery mode is online because we understand full-time, um, you are professionals in full-time and employment, your time is precious and limited. So the delivery is online, but it's interactive. That means you won't be just listening to the sessions. We take full advantage of all the systems that we have. There'll be breakout rooms, groups, things that you can still do online. It'll be once a week and you will have your full program from the very beginning. It'll, it'll be every Thursday three hours in the afternoon, you know that's going to be happening. In addition to those online sessions, we couldn't not have you on our beautiful campus. So we thought four full days, you could come onto the campus and you get to meet the other apprentices. So a fantastic chance to network and also enhance your um, softer skills, the skills and behaviors. We just ran our second on-campus um, session last week it was a day full of lively discussions group work developing and enhancing skills and behaviors and our apprentices got to kind of wind down at the end of the day and relax in the um, town mill bar or otm or student union bar as it's best known this um and my next slide thank you so much the, this is a snapshot of the timetable that you would have. So as you can see, everything is set in there. There are eight weeks of teaching. Um, the first session is induction on the 5th of September. It's a full day on campus. Last year in September, it was a beautiful hot day and we even had the ice cream van stop by. Uh, every nine weeks, you have the submission and progression review session. And that means it's a time for you to be able to submit any work you want or populate your endpoint assessment portfolio and also meet up with your academic mentor and professional um, online manager. Entry criteria, 
every single application we do consider on individual merit. Professional experience, educational background and per personal qualities are equally important to us. The assessment methods, these are the assessment methods set by the apprenticeship standards. Um, CMI, Chartered Management Institute, is our endpoint assessor. Um, you will go through this after roughly 18 months of teaching, um, but don't worry, we will make sure that you are prepared for this part and we won't let you go through unless we know that you're prepared for the endpoint assessment. Progression routes on this program are many. You could do the postgraduate diploma by just doing the program with us and by successful completion of the apprenticeship, you'd be eligible for that. Or not, if you want to progress onto the MBA, you can still do that as well. As soon as you've gone through the endpoint assessment, you've successfully got your apprenticeship, then you would come back to us for a minimum of six months to complete your endpoint assessment. Emma, I'm going to hand over back to you for the last few slides. Thanks, Sudi. Um, so I can be a um, testament to the online delivery being an absolute godsend. It means that people can log in from wherever they are, whether they're on a business trip, um, whether they're you know far from campus or not. It works really well. Um, I think it's key to explain that these are live lessons. So it's not watching a recording, it's absolutely um, an interactive team session with breakout rooms, with activities. We've done team building where we're building towers and having competitions online. So they they really are interactive and, and make it, you know, make the learning as fun as, and engaging as possible. Um, but with the days on campus, they're also really important. We really enjoyed our last day on campus and we've got another one in, in a few months and it is a, a really good opportunity to network and of course we have our uh, senior leader whatsapp group <laughs> that we've created and has been invaluable to um, sharing our thoughts on assignments that, and work that's set or, or reading that's been undertaken um, so in a nutshell this course is two years including the endpoint assessment you've got your remote delivery with four on comp on campus sessions. The funding for this is £14,000. If you come to us uh, to do this apprenticeship, we would do a detailed initial assessment and interview. Um, if, if it's determined that you have prior knowledge and skills, potentially there may be a reduction in the cost of the funding, but it will never go over this. And it's funded fully by the apprenticeship levy and the employer. Um, our endpoint assessment organisation that we collaborate with is the Chartered Management Institute. Uh, so it's great that we have access to all their resources and all their expertise as well when it comes to this apprenticeship. Um, applications are now live. You can go onto our website and apply now. I would recommend uh, the sooner you apply, the better. Uh, with it being an apprenticeship, with it being government funded, there are contracts, there are initial assessments, there's, there's paperwork to complete. So the sooner we can start the process and get that done so that we can make sure the digital account is set up and everything's in place for that enrolment on the 5th of September, the better. So there's a link here um, for the application. Also, if you have any further questions, they can be sent to the uh, faculty of uh, the business faculty admissions team or to the apprenticeship, who um, that's the inbox for the overall apprenticeship team, or myself, if it's a query, if you're an employer, or if you want to chat about whether or not you think this course might be suitable for you, um, there's my email as well. So I think that's the end. Shall we see if we've got any questions? Yes, um, I, I can see a question there. They've asked around what is the academic mentor and what did you mean by the progress review? sessions. Um, the academic mentor is somebody who's allocated to you right at the beginning of your apprenticeship journey. They are somebody with from the business school usually because the business school lecturers we all have some form of professional experience in the industry, some with many decades of experience in different industries. They will be supporting you from the very beginning of your journey. Um, the progress reviews 
These are every eight to 10 weeks, they are formal meetings between yourself, the academic mentor and your line manager. Um, that's to make sure that you are on track. However, we do encourage you every four weeks to get in touch with your academic mentor to have an informal chat or catch up just to make sure that you are where you want to be. And if there's any extra support that you need, the University of Buckingham can um, provide that. Very simple one is the academic skills, which Emma mentioned. Quite a lot of people had um, issues around that. We set up a extra session for that academic skills. Also, we have our ASK team, our academic skills and know-how team who are there to provide our students and you as our learners any help that you need from an academic perspective. So in, that's the role of the academic mentor and the progress review sessions. Yeah, and I'd like to add the ASK team, they can, be, they can do one-to-ones and group sessions, so um, you can book in a one-to-one. -one. That doesn't have to be done on campus, that can be done virtually as well if that's more suitable for you. So it's a really useful um, support and one that I know that m many apprentices access. There's a question here, um, says what are the um, other courses offered? I'm not quite sure what you mean, what are the other courses offered, as in the University of Buckingham courses offered or uh, as apprenticeship courses offered because we do have both. So, oh, someone going live? No. So I can talk about the other apprenticeships that are on offer <laughs> at the university. So we have the teacher apprenticeship, level six, which includes qualified teacher status. Um, and you can also undertake the postgraduate uh, certificate, the level seven alongside this uh, for a small, very small fee compared to how much it normally costs. Um, I believe that's 600 pounds. Uh, we also have the digital technology solution specialist, um, which is an integrated level seven uh, with an MSc. Um, and we also deliver in-house the business admin um, advanced level seven free apprenticeship, but that's purely for uh, our in-house workforce. So externally for applications, we've got the senior leader, the teacher apprenticeship, and the digital technology solution specialist. Um, does that answer your question or would you like the programs that we offer in the business school? I'm not quite sure. I think if it's a business school, head over to the website everything Absolutely. everything's on there um mm -hmm. there's lots of course information with the relevant email addresses for admissions um so if you if you require any further information with that please yeah head there and you'll find everything that you need absolutely we have a variety of business and accounting and finance modules both at undergrad and postgraduate okay i think that's all the questions I don't see any more questions on my end either. Thank you, Emma. So thanks everyone for coming. Um, it's a pleasure to speak to you all uh, and to promote apprenticeships during National Apprenticeship Week. I think it's key that we champion those as much as we can. It's great to see the numbers grow in. And as an apprentice undertaking the senior leader, I'd absolutely recommend this course. So if you want to discuss this further, get in touch. Thank you so much for um, joining us today. And I do hope I can welcome you to our beautiful campus in September.